Hey, Hickok45. I'm going to talk to you a little bit. Uh, many of you have been requesting that I weigh in on recent events. I've been getting messages, private messages, by the galore. I've been getting comments and, and uh, just an enormous uh, number of them. And uh, I'm flattered that you really care what I have to say about things. Uh, I really am. And, and that you have confidence that, that I might actually have something worthwhile to say uh, about it. You know, I'm no smarter than anybody else, uh, but you know, of course I do have opinions and some things I, I can share and we're going to do it since uh, you have requested it and you continue to request it. Uh, just, just didn't want to say anything uh, early on especially. Uh, for one thing, as you know if you watch the channel, uh, we, we don't really do the, the party politics things at all and, and get very political. And then again, uh, maybe more importantly, it really is not a firearms issue in my mind. So, you know, it's, uh, it's an insanity issue. It's, uh, it's a crazy issue. It's even a responsibility issue where we have a parent who allowed someone who was basically insane get their hands on firearms. So it, it's really not a firearms issue. And in some ways, by weighing in quickly on something like this, it uh, especially makes it seem like a firearms issue. Yes, you know, so all those different things going on in my head uh, that, you know, and in, in addition to just being very, very sad and, and not depressed, but boy, it's a kind of thing that could depress you, couldn't you? If you're prone to that or you think about it a little bit, uh, just a horrible, horrible, horrible event that you can't even think about it. I can't even go there hardly. Uh, I have a pretty good imagination. Uh, I, I really do. And, uh, you know, I, I just can't think, I cannot imagine anything worse than what happened in Connecticut. I, I really can't. I mean, can you? Unless you increase the numbers or something or think about it happening again, uh, just, just can't think of anything worse. And, but anyway, for all those reasons, just kind of stayed out of it. We posted a couple of videos we've done and uh, I've, I've made some comments, you know, on the feed tried to post some videos that I thought might help some of you looking for answers, looking for uh, maybe ammunition to, uh, to combat some of the uh, arguments and uh, the debate, the uh, anti-gunners and just different things like that. Uh, just haven't had the heart to, to really get into it. Uh, it's such a tragic thing. But, uh, but again, it's, it's not really a firearms issue when you get right down to it. You know, any more than, I don't know, my having a glass of wine tonight is responsible for the thousands and tens of thousands of people that will be killed on the highways, uh, you know, this year, you know, because of alcoholic beverages, you know, I mean, it's, it's just, it's just a weird thing. And uh, we could go around and round and, and circles talking about all of that. Mainly what I want to do is just talk about a couple of things. Uh, I want to talk to our subscribers. I want to talk to, well, new subscribers, uh, people new to shooting, and uh, maybe you're a subscriber, maybe you're not, maybe you just wandered in, but people who are new to the hobby, perhaps, new to shooting, thinking about uh, buying a gun and that sort of thing. Most of us who have been shooting for a long time, we've gone through this several times. We, these cycles, unfortunately, continue. You know, there's a there's a, another tragic uh, event of some sort, you know, uh, every so often, and uh, and so we're we're accustomed to the arguments, we're accustomed to uh, to being considered a, a fringe element at times, which I want to address for sure, because we're not a fringe element. We shooters, we're anything but that, especially uh, these days. But I just and I don't want to really address the uh, anti-gun crowd that, that are wandering in now a little bit more often than they used to. I don't have anything I can convince them with. I, you know, not even going to try. But uh, maybe they'll gain something from from seeing us. I do want to talk about the the culture and uh, some of the things that have been brought up. Mainly, I want to talk about uh, consequences. That's a, a theme I want to kind of carry through my rambling. And I want to talk about how people have such a fear of things they don't understand. You know, fear of the unknown, fear of things they don't understand, and then consequences. So that's mainly what I want to talk about. It's, uh, again, it's just been hard to talk about. You know, this is just such a horrific event that has occurred. 
and you know I'm a teacher and there's nothing there's nothing worse than thinking about that uh, little kids are so cute little first graders kindergartners uh, I mean all kids they're just they're just so sweet and innocent that it's it you just can't get your mind wrapped around it you really can't I see those kids that age almost every day you know in the cafeteria and they're, they're just so cute and innocent and it just breaks your heart it breaks your heart when you think about it and uh, I know it does yours too it, it does all of us so anyway it, it's awful but again I assumed I guess uh, I didn't weigh in I feel like it was necessary necessarily to to weigh in on this uh, again it's not a firearms issue I assumed that 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 our loyal viewers uh, so many of you you knew what to do uh, you knew kind of where to put this but but that's kind of my bias I've been through this so many times and I've been a shooter for so long uh, we fought these battles you know over and over I assume you knew you need to be calling your, your representatives you need to be writing them you know you, you see what's what's coming or what the uh, the anti-gun uh, forces are trying to impose I assumed you you knew that and and I've tried to give you a little information on that and it is sad that so many people well that's the other thing I think most of us in the firearms community feel like I do and did we didn't want to weigh in on this it has really nothing to do with us it's again it's an insane issue insanity issue but we are really just reacting and again I I understand why so many people have weighed in on it earlier because right away before before those bodies were removed from that school, uh, you know, there they were, the, the usual crowd of, uh, you know, of folks promoting their political agenda. You know, they've got their little pet agendas and already had them written up, ready to present. And uh, so that leaves us with few alternatives but, but to react. It's still hard for me. It's still hard. But anyway... It's not the end of the world. Now it is for some people, isn't it? And it's a, like it doesn't get any worse than that. But as far as the world, the world goes on, and we're going to continue uh, enjoying the hobby, and, and I'm sure you will too. Uh, we're not going to have all of our guns banned. We that is not going to happen. We have such a thing as a constitution in this country, and a Second Amendment. It's one reason we have a free country, if not the main reason. First Amendment, the Second Amendment. You know, we're not going to be limiting the Second Amendment in any uh, extreme way, and hopefully any way. Uh, we're going to limit the First Amendment. You know, you know, you know well, we're going to give you freedom of speech, but you know, uh, let's not carry it too far. You know, you, know, you, you don't have one freedom without the other. And uh, the Constitution is going to survive this. And that's why you need to be calling your representatives and writing them. And as I have been saying for years and years, and you know that, many of you have been saying the same thing, you have to support the gun rights groups because there are, there are, they are our spokespeople, really, in Washington. Whether it's the NRA, I'm a member of the NRA and the uh, Tennessee Firearms Association. Uh, and those are the only two I belong to right now. I may find another one to, to join, the Gun Owners of America and maybe send some extra money. This is a time to do that. You know, I, I know, I, and I'm not promoting the NRA necessarily. I know there's a lot of people that have a problem with various issues. We, there are issues with every organization. Have you ever worked for a company that, that was perfect? Have you ever been in a family that was perfect? People aren't perfect. Organizations definitely are not perfect. They're gonna make you mad. You know, there, there's things that, that, that go on that you don't like. There are people you don't like. You know, that's just life. If you're so young and naive that you don't realize that, uh, come on now, mature up, you know, grow up a little bit. Uh, out, of, out of self, out of, uh, out of uh, uh, survival, I'm <laughs> trying to say, we just have to. So kind of overlook as much as, as you can. Do what you can, whatever the organization is. Call those representatives. That's, that's the main reason I wanted to go ahead and get in front of the camera. and. Uh, advise you, remind you, you don't need that advice, just remind you, we have no choice. You have to become active now, make those calls, get the numbers. You don't even know who your representatives are, look it up online, get the numbers, that's step one. Put it in your pocket, 
mean, you're in a car riding somewhere with nothing to do, turn off the music, get that number out, call, make the call, you know, send the email, and let them know what you think. If you think that a 30-round magazine should be banned, call them and tell them that. If you think ARs don't have a place, call them and tell them that. But by all means, call and tell them what you think, okay? I mean, please do that. You have no choice. We've got to get that done, all right? So, what I want to do, a call to action to, uh, to some extent there. Not that you need me to do that, but, uh, you know, just want to throw my voice out there too, along with the rest of them. One of the things I wanted to talk about, and this is something I have tried to do for decades, and again, that just falls under representing the, the shooting community well. You know, we all know there are people who don't do that. And that could be our downfall. You know, there are a lot of folks, especially on the internet, they're anonymous and they just don't represent us well. Uh, and I just talk about the gun culture, quote unquote. Well, we've been hearing that phrase a lot lately. I'm here to tell you I'm a proud member of the gun culture. Yes, I am. I'm a proud member of lots of cultures, I guess. I don't know, the Tennessee culture, the education culture. I've been a member of the publishing culture, the bicycling culture, the uh, motorcycle culture now. I don't know, what else? There's lots of cultures. There's nothing wrong with that. If I were a golfer, I'd be a part of the golf culture. and People would be buying me all these cute little golf uh, ornaments and gifts for Christmas, right? So nothing wrong with the gun culture. I've been a member of the gun culture for a long time. It's been a great hobby. Those of you especially um, who kind of new to shooting maybe or you've uh, just picked it up recently, you may not have really uh, become yet what you would consider a part of the, the gun culture. Let me remind uh, you all and then anybody else who might be watching this that's not necessarily a shooter, uh, there are millions of us. I, I, I still think, as I said, I believe that many people on the other side kind of regard us, people who have firearms like this, as some really small fringe group. Really, I think they do. And that falls under not really knowing what you don't know, uh, being afraid of what you don't understand. You know, Whatever you think about firearms and whether you think that firearms like this should be banned or taken up, confiscated, or magazines like this should not be permitted, whatever you think about that, let me, let me just give you a little information, just food for thought, okay, that you may not be aware of. First of all, the numbers uh, people argue about all the time, but there are several hundred million firearms you know, in this country. Several hundred million. We don't know how many exactly. I, you see numbers, everything from 150, 200 million to 350 million. I think uh, generally maybe there's more firearms than there are people, okay, in this country. All right, so try taking those up, right? Uh, uh, AR-15s. Oh, this evil firearm. What if the last number I heard was there's between maybe 5 and 10 million of these. If, if anybody that's a shooter and has been a shooter and gun collector almost at any level, uh, the moderate level, they either have one of these things or they've been thinking about getting one. This is not something that the fringe, that the 1% the or one-tenth of a percent of shooters might have, okay? So I'm kind of I, I'm trying to give you a little insight into my culture, gun culture. Now, it may not make any difference if you are someone who is leaning against this sort of thing or maybe you're even anti-gun and you're kind of watching this video, he's ready to pounce on, on me and, and all the shooters. Uh, that's another topic. <laughs> but just, just be aware. I mean, for whatever it's worth, you may not care, but just be aware there may be 10 million of these. Uh, Anybody I know who shoots, and that's a lot of people in all walks of life, whether attorneys, teachers, uh, bus drivers, just, uh, you name it, they either have one of these or they're planning on getting one, or they have three or four of them. It's a really common platform and has been for, I don't know, 15, 20 years now. Uh, you, can, you can put different uppers on them. You can get a shorter barrel on the top. You can get a different kind of uh, a handle that attaches and removes. 
uh, you can you can uh, and of course a lot of them now have a, 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 a rail where you can put different sorts of sites on them you can get different types of stocks longer stocks I've got an extension on this old one uh, shorter stocks collapsible stocks different calibers different magazines different uh, forearms that may be more comfortable to you all kinds of sites telescope uh, scopic sites, uh, red dot sites, different uh, slings, different uh, flash suppress. I mean, they are uh, they're an industry in and of themselves. Uh, people hunt with them. People sports shoot with them. They compete with them. Uh, they just have them for defense, for home defense, defend to defend their family. You know, if I was living in southern Arizona <laughs> or somewhere, I definitely would have one of these. You know, uh, close to the border. But uh, they're a very, they're an extremely common rifle, the AR-15. I, I mean, that's one of the messages I wanted to bring today to people who might be kind of new to the gun culture. And of course, all you do is walk into a gun shop and you see it. Well, at least you did see that. You walk into a gun shop today, and this is Christmas Eve as I speak. You can't find one of these in a gun shop. There may not be one of these in any gun shop in the United States. So uh, all this talk has, again, sold more firearms. Uh, but it's a huge industry in parts, and a lot of people uh, make their living you know, through firearms like this. It's just, just a fact. If you weren't aware of that, just want to make you aware of that. Uh, now this one I bought in 1984. It's an A2, an old A2. It's actually kind of a transition gun. I bought it new, and that's 29 years ago. Uh, for you people in Kentucky, that's almost 30 years. So this has been a firearm in my collection all that time. And as far as I know, it's uh, not harmed anybody and, uh, or anything. I've used it in uh, shooting matches. I've enjoyed it on the range. And it's just been an interesting firearm uh, to own and enjoy. So just thought I'd bring that out for that reason. 1984 is probably before some of you are even born. And uh, these have been around a long time. A lot of people have had them for a long time. Uh, so, but again, the world doesn't revolve around, around that particular firearm. There are a lot of cool firearms and, and just as effective uh, for, for defense or uh, anything else. But one to mention, shooting is, uh, again, in, in interest of providing information, the things maybe you hadn't thought about. Um, it's a, I always call it that hidden sport, you know. You can drive around Nashville or Detroit or I guess any city. You see golf courses, you know, you see uh, playgrounds, basketball courts, and that kind of thing. You don't drive down the road and see some people over there shooting their AR-15s at a range, their family, you know, with the little girls and the young son or whatever, the wife. You don't see that, do you? Well, it's the nature of the game, nature of the sport, of the activity. It's going to be off, away from things because of the noise generally and the, uh, the safety. So you don't see that. So I always call it a hidden sport, but it's there. You can't believe how many people participate in it. Uh, I mean, it's growing by leaps and bounds. That's why the gun industry has, gone, has done so well in recent years. You know, it's just done exceedingly well, better than I think just about any industry out there, even during the economic downturn. So great guns. And why would you want one of these? Why do I want one of these? Why do people like these things? Uh, are you going to war? No, it, it, they're just interesting to shoot. And uh, they're like a car, a hot car. You know, uh, I, I'm happy with, uh, generally speaking, you know, my old Honda L Element uh, four-cylinder engine and everything. But it'll still, I think, go 100 miles an hour if I wanted to. Think of all the hot cars that are out there. Uh, is there really any need for a car that'll go 100 miles an hour? That'll go 80 miles an hour? You know, 120? Big V8 engine? sucks up the gas and uh, can speed like crazy. Why do they even exist? You know, I mean, is there a need for that? Uh, you know, we could save a lot of lives if we limited the speed limit to about 50 miles per hour everywhere. Nowhere over 50, we'd probably save 20,000 lives. You know, just right there. If, if saving lives is what it's all about. So in cars, I don't even have anything to do with the Second Amendment, the Constitution protecting the country, you know. So I hope you saw the video that I have had featured for about a week. Uh, you know, the, the lady who, uh, whose parents were killed in Luby's cafeteria uh, in Texas, uh, you know, 
uh, I don't know how many years ago that was, 10 or 15 years ago, her testifying uh, before the Senate hearing or Congress. And, uh, you know, she makes some really good points about that. But, uh, yeah, we have lots of things in our society that, that we could eliminate or try to, and maybe it would save a life or two, like alcohol. You know? uh, nobody wants to talk about that, do they? Now, I enjoy beer occasionally, pretty rarely, actually. A glass of wine, uh, rarely. Uh, does that make me responsible for the tens of thousands of deaths that occur on the highway that are alcohol related? Does it make you responsible when you're having a Budweiser at your house, you're not driving? Uh, you know, does the fact that some, a lot of people, millions own these things and occasionally one gets misused because of some madman, uh, does that make them responsible? I don't know. You have to make those decisions, don't you? Are there, are there good guns and bad guns? Or are there good people and bad people? You know, uh, one of the comments that Wayne LaPierre made was that there's nothing that, that can really stop a bad man with a gun better than a good man with a gun, you know? And I've heard that line lots of times, but it, it's still so, so true. Uh, it's people that are bad. It's uh, people that are good, and we all know that. So, and I'm not even gonna argue all that. That's just so obvious. Uh, the police officers out there, if guns were bad, inherently bad, any kind of gun, why would we let the police have them? You know, duh, uh, soldiers, you know? Uh, so if guns are dangerous and evil, we better get them out of the hands of police, right? And, uh, and honest citizens, you know, so. Uh, but anyway, a lot of people just don't think about those things. Uh, so I'm just kind of trying to throw some information out there. Uh, a lot of people just don't understand the shooting community, that what people do, how many people are involved in the shooting community. I have friends all the time, colleagues I work, I had an email this morning, I promise you this morning I could show you the email, my uh, company email uh, where I work, uh, uh, someone I don't even know him that well, uh, another teacher was thinking about a carry permit and was asking about information on that. I get that all the time from people, of course they know what I, what I do, but uh, just everywhere relatives uh, are interested in uh, a carry permit or just getting a gun it's just fun uh, so it's a growing growing sport if you live in a bubble somewhere and don't know that I'm, I'm sorry I was watching the news last weekend and a station where generally they're pretty well balanced uh, when they're arguing some issue they'll have both sides usually and uh, that's the way I like to see it but the anchors, whom I appreciate and respect, I, I actually like a couple of those anchors pretty well. They were talking about these people in Connecticut and, and this woman that had the three guns and just different things over the weekend. And it was interesting, very uh, instructive. They were not taking any kind of anti-gun approach at all, but they were genuinely perplexed why this woman in Connecticut would have three semi-automatic uh, weapons. Well, was the crime rate up there? I mean, they were trying genuinely to figure it out. It was so funny, and they would on and on, one after the other, and, it, and you know, the banter between them, and it was just like, what is wrong with these people? I wanted to call, get on the phone. Uh, hello? Uh, how about getting out of New York and, and looking at the real world? I could, I could throw a rock and well, not throw a rock, but I could drive a half a mile in five different directions, and, and, and it'd be hard to find someone who doesn't have three firearms, you know? <sighs> I'm not telling most of you anything. It's just so, my point there is there's so many people in those little bubbles in different parts of the country where they, they just don't get it. They don't realize it. That's what I'm trying to, to kind of convey to you all, the viewers, that the gun culture it is a major hobby it's it's unbelievably large really and there's still people who they have no clue so I, I sort of understand they see something like this oh, oh evil why would anybody need that they don't know millions of people have them and enjoy them so anyway I, I just it, it's just it's just it's, it's crazy isn't it uh, uh, anyway back to the, the other thing I want to talk about is consequences. That's another important uh, point. Uh, 
You know, one of my favorite lines is from Robert Louis Stevenson. He says that uh, sooner or later, everyone sits at a banquet of consequences, or everyone sits down to a banquet of consequences. And boy, that is so true. It's one of my favorite lines because, uh, you know, everything comes home to roost at some point. You know? And we are experiencing the consequences to some extent of our policies, uh, of our focus on guns when these things happen, rather than focusing on what can be done to prevent them from happening. Uh, you, you can't limit, you can't confiscate, you, you can't change the, the, the country. Now, if you do, you try that, I don't think that's going to work too well. Uh, I, I just can't see people giving up their firearms, not in this country. You know, they wouldn't do it. A lot of people would not do it. That, I think that's just a simple fact. That's just a simple fact. You would have a lot of, you know, some of the most patriotic people are gun owners. Maybe the most patriotic people, you know, and I won't say the most, but a lot of the most patriotic people are gun owners. You would be turning so many of those people into expatriates. You really would. Uh, so, you know, that's just that's just a, a, a no-brainer. That's not going to happen. Uh, we've got to look at uh, alternatives. I think we've got to look at something to protect kids in school. You know, whether it is guards, armed guards, whatever it might be. You know, I work in one of those gun-free zones myself. You know, all I've got is a ballpoint pen. You know, I'm just like the rest of the, the people who are in gun-free zones. You know. Uh, you know, maybe a baseball bat or something. I don't know. It's a, I'm right there with them. Uh, but I make that choice. I love teaching. You know, kids are fun. They're great. It's, it's just a, been a great career, and I, I have no regrets. But, you know, I'm, I'm in that same environment, so I have a little insight into that. Uh, but we've got to do something to protect them. And, uh, and I know what will happen. We'll, we'll just put a Band-Aid on it, and we'll, we'll do something that will be a, a feel-good solution. I guarantee it. It'll be a feel-good solution and we'll uh, try to restrict firearms in some way, as if that's going to really make a difference, uh, keep some madman from, from getting firearms. So, you know, it, it's, just, it's just crazy what's going to happen. Now, the other area of consequences is, is personal consequences. If you've not been active, politically active at all, you've not been a member of gun rights organizations, you've not written letters to the editor, You've not made your, uh, your feelings known to people that can actually make a difference, you know, there's consequences for that. Maybe we're seeing those consequences now. Like I said, I hate to always come back to the NRA, but that's the biggest elephant in the room. You know, with, who knows, 150 million gun owners or more, four million uh, members. You know, and a lot of people are not a member because they didn't get the hat when they were supposed to, or somebody said something they didn't like, or whatever. Uh, try to get over that as much as you can. Hold your nose, send the check. I mean, really, you know, and then go bad mouth them. You know, if you want to, but send the check. You know, we need the lobbyists in there right now more than ever. Uh, you know, don't have to love them, don't even have to like them, but we've got to maintain our rights. Uh, I don't know. There's so many things I could talk about, and I don't want to belabor. And I'm not trying to. I'm not very good at debating these things. I, I just get weary of the debates. I've gone through this so many times. You can't believe how many times I've I've experienced this, and I have whiplash over the years. There's always another shooting or something goes on. ARs go up to 1,200, they go back down to 600, they go up to 1,500, and uh, more gun controls proposed. And the crime bill went through, oh, it did no good. You know, 10 years of the, the crime bill had no effect, virtually no effect. Uh, so you know, all we did was we paid another $100 for a Glock magazine for those 10 years. So that made a lot of sense. Uh, so I tend to not weigh in for that reason. I just had enough of it almost okay but I feel obligated because you want to hear from me so here I am ranting a little bit I meant I didn't want to rant uh, but it does get me fired up a little bit so uh, but again things are going to be fine uh, things are going to be fine they're not going to eliminate the Second Amendment and I don't think we're even going to eliminate the, or limit these very much you know because they are not the problem uh, so you know I think you can probably rest easy as long as you're you're active uh, I want to I want to leave you with a couple of thoughts, and that is mainly to to do what you can and try to represent the argument as best you can. Try not to get too wound up, and because 
you, you just need to set a good example. That's what I try to do and, uh, and not be obnoxious. We have enough people who are obnoxious on the internet, and we know that. And, and don't fall prey to the goofy arguments. You know, 10 rounds in one of these is just no difference from 30 rounds. You know, the, the magazines, whatever it is, five rounds. Uh, a person can take a couple of revolvers. You can take a couple of black powder revolvers, percussion revolvers, into a school and kill people. A couple of knives and a couple of percussion revolvers or just a couple of knives, you know. Uh, you know, I, mean, I don't even want to get into all that, uh, but it's not. And then the, the, the main argument that, that they fall back on lots of times is, well, uh, yeah, but if it would save a couple of lives, aren't you willing to sacrifice your sport? Aren't you willing to give up a little bit if it'll save even a couple of lives? Now, that's an argument that always makes me want to cry. Lots of things would save a couple of lives. You know, let's just, uh, again, limit the speed limit. Let's do away with alcohol. I mean, you can do anything to save a couple of lives. Are you willing to risk the Constitution and the, the Republic, you know, to save a couple of lives? Yeah, really. I mean, I, think about that argument. That is so ridiculous. But you know, I'm getting into a rant again. I didn't mean to do that. Be sure that you write your representatives. Uh, call them. Stay on the phone. Stay on the email. Let them know how you think. And again, you may not agree with me. You might think that there should be some restrictions. Whatever you think, jump into it and get after it. And don't just sit back. Uh, I shouldn't have to tell you now. You know it's, it's the time to do that if ever gonna, you're ever going to. You've got to do it now. Okay? Uh, and again, I appreciate your confidence in me. Uh, I, I'm not really that good at this. I'm, I'm, I'm just more comfortable talking about firearms and and uh, the sport that we all enjoy. Uh, you can see I do kind of get wound up when I get to thinking about it. I think some people might have thought, well, I wonder what Hickok thinks about this. You think he would be okay with limiting uh, magazine capacity or something? Maybe he does. Maybe that's why he's not talked. Hey, dream on, guys. Gals, that's, that's not my thinking at all. You should know that. If I thought that if someone could guarantee me, okay, we do away with these 30 round magazines, and 10 rounds is the most you can have for any semi-automatic, and that will save, uh, there'll be no school shootings, there'll be no one killed. Well, of course I would, but you can't do that. That, 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 that If I thought there was a, a direct correlation, of course I would be. Nobody wants to see people hurt. I mean, that, that's the, the thing I should have started with, I guess. I assume you know that, all of us feel that way. We're, you know, we're not that selfish. If, if there was something we could give up, even though we didn't want to, and it would save a lot of lives for sure. Well, of course we would. You know, we're not we're not Neanderthals. So, but anyway, stay active, stay politically active. We're not going anywhere. We're going to continue doing uh, shooting videos, and uh, we've got a few in the can. We're going to post and uh, continue having fun, and uh, continue thinking about those poor folks that that lost their lives and lost their families. You know, in Connecticut, it, it's tragic, and I hope our political leaders actually get together and really do something about it. Do something that will actually work right now and not focus on stupid issues like, like magazine capacity or something. So anyway, I'll calm down and uh, I'll have to end with life is still good because it is.